Hello, Lucy. Hi, Megan. How are you? <laughs> I'm good, thanks. Thanks so much for uh, willing to speak to me out of all the Bravo ones. <laughs> I'm really excited. You just look gorgeous with your fairy like glow behind you, and obviously, you are lovely as well. Oh, just... You're far too kind, but likewise, I like your fairy lights as well. I feel like we're going to have like a cosy little evening chat. It's lovely. I know. It's like kids are down for now. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't have said that. It's like touch wood. How are you getting on with the global music match? Oh, you know what? I'm really enjoying it. It's intense and I'm learning so much. Aside from all of that technological stuff and learning how on earth you use social media because I've like preferred to stay in the dark ages for all of my career regards those things yeah I'm with you. I'm so with you there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but aside from that it's just so lovely right to be able to hop online and shout about other artists I feel like we've been given the agency to 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 share audiences and opportunities with each other not wait for it to be gifted on high by some great gig opportunity but to just you know shout out about some of the incredible people that we've been able to connect with and I feel really lucky to be in a team with you guys because gosh we must have shared a million bills over the course of our careers at festivals um, but never actually had an opportunity to properly connect so Absolutely. you know as well as all the international folks it's so great to be paired with Brayback. Oh well likewise I was saying to the guys say so from me you know when I first uh, knew that we were being paired up with you I was like oh this is great because I think I met you like I've only in person I've only maybe met you once or twice before yes. and like you say there were many bills but you know as festivals kind of go you're here, there and everywhere, but it was actually my first um, uh, English Folk Festival with Brebach back in 2011, I think it was, and it was Shrewsbury, and you were on it as well, and I remember meeting you, because your hair was a lovely, blue. it was blue, that was blue. what it was. Yes, so, I remember da -ba -dee, da -ba -da. that too. <laughs> <laughs> so it was really nice to kind of get to... Uh, properly connect with you and stuff this time. And Can I just stop you? I'm loving that early 2000s reference has of to be. Um, Eiffel 65 there. <laughs> yes. Maybe we should do a cover of that before Global Music matches out. In fact, the youngins have done a cover of it before. Oh, but of course I have. <laughs> I'm, I'm still waiting for the, a Spice Girls kind of folk revival sort of thing going on. Um, yes. I'm very Who was your favourite Spice Girl, Megan? I need to know. Baby Spice. <laughs> yeah, I like the way you said that with just like, <laughs> how could you like any other Spice Girl? And you? Ginger Spice, oh, all the way. Yeah, absolute girl power. Can you give me a, give us a wee bit kind of background, a bit of Scylla Black moment for you? What's your name oh. and where do you come from? <laughs> so Scylla. Yes. I'm Lucy. I'm from Derby, which is right smack bang in the middle of England, if you popped a pin in the map. And um, and I am a singer-songwriter and uh, interpreter of traditional song. Um, I started out like um, most of us did. Um, I didn't grow up with folk music, but I, I found it accidentally when I got a guitar age 14 and just oh. um you know started going down to folk clubs and got really interested in traditional song because i love stories um and the sort of artists that i like outside of the folk genre it's always about you know a tale to tell if there's like a nugget of truth or like some big meandering lyric i'm just all about it yeah. but i've just been really lucky that i've had lots of um I feel like uh, I've just been open to opportunities rather than pursued them. Mm -hmm. um, but I've just been really lucky that the opportunities that have come, I've been mad enough to go, yeah, I'll do that. Like right, writing right. for film and theatre and uh, all of those things just happen completely accidentally. I never set out to do them. And I wrote a ballet last year, which again was just about a, a chance meeting with a fabulous choreographer at a gig. Um, as well as put out four albums and collaborate with a lot of different people. It's just been a real 
ride and I think probably as you say because we've been contemporaries going through the scene where have I had a really similar thing in the sense of you know been you know you, you guys what 15 years and I've been at it 10 years profession my first album came out 10 years next year so mm-hmm. I'm celebrating the first official decade yeah. and um it's really it's really exciting and awesome but also as you say you know I'm 30 there's the joy of the folk scene is that I've got about 455 years left of my career <laughs> <in this. laughs> your kind of your last album uh, last night you brought out it's definitely got a kind of that feel of it's it's still folk music like you're saying you're sticking to your roots but you've just you know it's your it, it, I say you've grown with it and that's that's what's lovely with folk music though as well isn't it that you can kind of it, it tells a story you know all the time and yeah it's telling the without story. a doubt without a doubt and I think you know I was the sort of person who only ever picked up instruments so they had something to sing their songs to sure and so for me, the story is always at the heart of everything that I try to offer up. You were, um, uh, you led me to, it was the, the song, was it the one about the, the mermaid? Oh, the mermaid song. Yeah, so I wanted song. to talk about this yeah. because it has a Scottish connection. So um, back in my roots, I have Scottish ancestors and there's this brilliant family story i'm gonna say true story even yeah. though it's about a mermaid because they're real you know, they're real they are so oh, ma- so many gallic songs so many gallic songs have got mermaids on them there you go you see you have to be careful who you say to people like mermaids are real too but i'm glad we've got this thing yeah. going on i know i know um, ariel <laughs> <laughs> personally yeah <laughs> <laughs> i love it um yeah so um uh, Daniel Manson was his name. He was my, I think it was three times great uncle. And um, he was a fisherman of the Isle of Yell in mm-hmm. Shetland Isles. And um, so the story goes that he and the men that he was out with caught a um, mermaid one day in their nets. Mm-hmm. And the, um, obviously they were horrified because it's such terrible luck to catch a mermaid. Um, but they um, kind of wrote down very quickly what she looked like because they were so startled by catching this creature um, and before they slipped her back into the sea and she swam away but they described her as this small blue human with a moon like face and big round eyes and and kind of long human fingers and a fish tail and um, and uh, yeah and then when they got back to shore because they were just like oh my god this is ah I imagine they were like ah in the (laughs) early 1800s and uh, they went back to shore and they had to tell the justice of the peace everything that had happened so there's fantastic um uh kind of documented stuff um about what these men saw and he never went out to sea again because he believed you know in the bad in, in that he brought bad luck in it, it and he couldn't go out on the water again after that day and it was just this family tale that I'd known for a million years as we do about our own mm. ancestors um and then it kind of dawned on me that that is a folk song why on earth have I not written that song before that's brilliant um, so yeah so I respawn the mermaid a little bit as more of the mermaid that we expect from folk culture you know a gorgeous siren like person but yeah and Daniel and the mermaid is what came out. You talked uh, briefly about the um, the ballet the folk ballet that you're involved in I'm very sad that I wasn't asked to be a part of that I used to be a ballerina back in the day. <laughs> what? Are you serious? I say back in the day like way way back in the day (laughs) hey man i have no movement experience at all so you know if i'm allowed to be part of it this is very exciting news megan you may have just got yourself a gig oh my goodness i'm yeah i'm game i'm not working for the rest of well you know probably the rest of the year so that's it dust off those ballerina shoes stick on a tutu (laughs) yeah as i say it was a, a chance meeting 
fabulous um, uh, woman, now my collaborating friend, but fabulous woman that I met at a gig called um, Deborah Kate Norris. And she um, was lecturing at, a, um, at Edge Hill Uni in dance and been a dance teacher and dancer all her life. Anyway, she just said, oh, I, I use your songs um, in some of my uh, performances that oh, we cool. um, put on. And now, of course, as you well know, when people tell you that your song's gone off and had a life that you just never would have expected, it's really flattering and heartwarming and it's just like oh wow and um yeah we we just clicked and connected and swapped numbers and then over the next four years um she started a phd i had some children eventually we were just like we have to do a ballet we've got to do a full Brilliant. ballet and so i wrote all of the 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 lyrics but um i wrote the music with helga ragnar's daughter mm. and um and anna esselman so we got 10 minutes of the it together and we took it down to the women in folk conference that um english folk dance song society put on mm -hmm. and um, just to see if anybody really thought that this was a thing we should develop we just needed some feedback to know if we were absolutely insane <laughs> and <laughs> um we were the first people to speak in the first morning um session of the conference and there were like 12 people in the audience one of which was shirley collins so i was like <gasps> And um, and we did the we did the ten minutes of the ballet and talked about it as an idea. And thankfully, in the audience there was Rebecca Stewart um, from Cambridge Folk Festival, and she previously been a dancer, a bit like yourself, dancer turned folky. <laughs> and um, and she just saw something in it and commissioned it for the um, opening act on the main stage for Cambridge, and that's what Ooh. gave us the the go ahead. You'll have to have to let us know when it's on. And I'll be there backstage just in case somebody, you know, breaks a leg. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Waiting well, in the wings. Uh, we're going to be touring it next year, and um, and we are working on um, the stories for the next, the next instalment, the next part of the story for the Henwife. So yeah. it's just so exciting to me, and it inspires and motivates me in different ways to my own um, kind of normal offering. So yeah, hey, you briefly touched on uh, having a wee one away with you uh, on tour. How do you, well, as a, a very new mum, how do you, I'm like really interested to know, how do you juggle the kind of work commitments and responsibilities for the wee ones? And being away on tour, obviously just now we're not away on tour, so I've kind of got that luxury, I suppose, of being at home and kind of, you know, having this time. But I would love to no what's the secrets <laughs> please tell me them no all secrets. I, think, I think the um the key is don't take them on tour no no <laughs> no um it's it's definitely a really really strange one because you know most although we'll have the joy of not um you know having this blessed year off you know that it, it typically employed people have this year off and then they mm. go back to work and that's kind of it isn't it they're in the childcare routine and we'll have this time where we are there and sharing adventures with our kids at gigs and stuff but it does mean we start working so much sooner and with my eldest i was um i started back at 10 weeks and then with my youngest yeah he was he was just shy of a month when i played cambridge wow and and yeah, I, it was a little bit mad. It was a little that's, bit mad. Uh, that's amazing. You are. <laughs> I, yeah. I can I can hardly go to the shop yet. It's... <laughs> Mate, I was a shriveled heap on the floor Aww. by the end of the day with all the emotional exhaustion of just what doing that does to you. But you know, he was fine, and it was all great. And you know, I was really lucky to have lovely support network of my husband and my mum coming to help but um yeah I mean children at, at, at gigs is the sh is such a strange balance and I think mm -hmm. for me it's like switching your brain mm -hmm. from mum brain to performance brain because you know like in gigs of your right we might have taken an hour to 
get ourselves ready not because we're vain but just because it was part of the ritual right absolutely like, yeah. i'm getting ready i'm warming up i'm putting my gear on bit of war paint on we go <laughs> <laughs> now it's like i'm in the car like this trying to like get my makeup on and um and you know nurse my little one enough that he might sleep till the interval mm. pray 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 and um and all that kind of stuff so it is it's a mad juggle but i i tell you what i found is that that um the audiences are very kind yeah. <laughs> and actually they kind of uh you know I, I've had a lovely response to the humanness of me getting into a gig playing a few songs and then going gosh I actually feel like I'm here with you now yeah. thanks for bearing <laughs> with that I'm in the zone now let's have a party mm. and um you know I, it's it's really great isn't it because we we started at this job so young that our audience are watching us literally grow up yeah. and start our own families and new adventures. And, um, and yeah, so I, I have no secrets other than maybe like feed your children more biscuits than you ever thought you would let them eat and always <laughs> have Peppa Pig available on your phone. Of course. Yeah. I can understand that. I have to use that for you and quite often as well when he gets cranky. <laughs> Um, yeah, so um, I've got new music coming out at the end of the year. It's um, it's actually an EP that I wrote um, in conjunction with a fantastic project called Stories of Change for the Open University. And those songs have been um, sitting there on kind of a platform being used and the time is just right now for them to come out in a wider way to the public. Um, so people can, you know, keep, keep an eye out for that. And aside from that, I've got some live streams and a few real gigs but we'll see if that you know a uh, real as in in a venue with people gigs um planned but you know we'll have to just see what happens with those but um i've been so um surprised and like touched and moved by how kind my fan base has been to to follow me online during these times and to watch me fumble around with working out how to do this online mm. um and I, I don't know about you but it's just it's um it's just been lovely that people have maintained their interest in live music even though they can't go and see it right now thank you, thank you. <laughs> for keeping us a little bit sane <laughs> i had uh, a wee idea for just a quick fire round yes your favorite gig that you have performed shrewsbury folk festival main stage with my band 2015 Ooh, nice favorite gig you have been to uh, probably Bowie at Glastonbury <gasps> or maybe you, you went to see Braybuck yeah Braybuck and Shrewsbury it was your favourite gig I heard that too Great. no actually I think my favourite Braybuck gig that I've ever seen was Warwick maybe you guys have yeah you guys have played Warwick yeah, right I'm Warwick. not remembering yeah, yeah. somewhere and um and I was just with a group of people who actually like to dance i love to dance i'm not a ballerina but i love mm. to just like <laughs> and um i was finally just found myself with a group of people who wanted to go nuts at your gig so i was down the front like yeah i think I, I i totally remember the one okay another uh, quick question favorite road services oh oh t-bay oh classic and if there's a track for our audience uh, to listen to to kind of showcase you what what track would that be oh my god you could have warned me about that question sorry. that's so that's, hard that's a hard one i, I kind of want you to say i kind of want you to to say the the oh, i always forget it wrong the falurum song <laughs> Cause they've got no forlorum, forlivery, and they've got no forlorum, forlivery. They've got no forlorum, they've lost their ding dorum, dar mates when you're young, never, never wed an old man. man. Yay! <laughs> That was on my first album it's a song that's been with me as uh, for many years and of course it's a real like standard of the tradition yeah. um but it is a song that um 
that when I do whip it out at gigs, it's always just so, so fun. Yeah. And, you know, we're all singing along together. So, yeah, I, th- I think that's a good shout. Nice. And otherwise, I suppose, I don't know, For the Dead Men, which is kind of my my uh, song that's a reflection of the times we've been living in, really, for the last 10 years, where um, prophets are always chosen over people and kind of my uh, frustration at that and my song of solidarity and support to the people in the world who want to live in a, you know, in a society that cares about people, that mm-hmm. that would be one. They're probably kind of like the two ends of the spectrum. That's the happy, cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. bawdy, fun, which I do like to sing a lot of those kind of songs and the kind of more uh, storytelling. For sure. I've got something to tell you guys. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, listen, we'll get them, get them listened to. And I think for now, I should say night night. And thanks so much, Lucy, uh, for for chatting to me. See you online somewhere and hopefully see you at TV services as well. Oh my gosh, I'll be there. <laughs> nice. You'll know me. I'll be wearing a Union Jack dress. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you see me, pigtails, pink dress. Those, we um... have to make this Spice Girls thing happen. Thank you so much for chatting to me. Not at all. <laughs> night, night. Cheers. <laughs>